So Ed Sheeran awarded 1.1 million in legal costs Ta-da! after winning the Shape of You plagiarism lawsuit. All right, so guys, so so let me just give you kind of the, the recap here. So there was a lawsuit and they concluded a trial. It was like an 11-day trial and this was in April. And so what happens is that after there is an award, so in which case the court said there was no copyright infringement, no plagiarism, then, you know, the parties have to deal with the attorney's fees issue. So what um, the, the losing side, right, the plaintiffs ask, they go, hey, we want defendants to have to pay their own attorney's fees. We don't want to get stuck with the attorney's fees. And the court uh, recently announced, no, you, you know, unfortunately, everyone, uh, or not everyone, plaintiffs have to bear the cost of defendants' attorney's fees in the amount of $1.1 million. Guys, we talk about this with these copyright cases, and I'm always like, yes, you can sue. Yes, you can seek a copyright infringement you know, uh, resolution you know, through a court of law, but if you lose, you might get stuck with the other side's fees, and mm. these are not you know, inexpensive lawsuits. No, not especially with that. Not not when you're dealing with this much money that's on the table, for sure. I mean, this isn't this isn't some Judge Judy case. Of course, you don't get lawyers there, so <laughs> don't don't be shading on Judge Judy. I love Judge Judy. You know, I'll watch Judge Judy when I'm working out. When I'm on that treadmill, I'll put that Judge Judy right on. That's right. No, she's she's amazing. She wasn't she like one of the most highly paid. Uh, yeah. Uh, like reality show. Yeah, yeah ever. Crazy. <laughs> No, she's doing good. But in any case, all right. So, so Sharon and his two co-writers. So there's Steve uh, McCut- McCutnion and Johnny McDade. And so they were all kind of lopped into this legal battle. And so what was interesting was that as part of the, of, of the plaintiff's claim to say, no, you know, Ed Sheeran and the co-writers, they need to bear their own attorney's fees. Um, it's because two things. Number one, they did not participate in pre-litigation resolution, right? Which would be things like, hey, we sent them a demand letter, pay us money. And so either they just, you know, didn't respond or they didn't participate well enough. So that was part one of the claim. And then part two uh, was that, you know, apparently there were some like voice memos, you know, when they were making the song that weren't disclosed. So some alleged discovery issues. But, you know, the judge just said that's that's absolutely not enough for me to basically have them cover a million dollars in attorney's fees when you lost. What do you do when you are sending out, you know, either demand letters or, you know, things to different attorneys and they just either they just don't respond to you because <laughs> it's or does that or does that not happen or do do attorneys just kind of have a professional courtesy with each other where they know, um, right. you know, they know they have to do it? Yeah, good question. Um, so uh, most commonly I do get especially when I'm communicating with actual attorneys, right? Um, we get responses, we comply with deadlines that are set by each side. So having an attorney is actually a good thing, right? Sometimes clients will be a little nervous because they get a letter and it's from an attorney. It can be a good thing because it means you have hopefully a sense of professionalism on the other side of the dispute. Um, it's a little more wonky when people are not represented, but <laughs> oftentimes, and even if it's, you know, a non-represented party, I do get a response, but I mean, to answer your question, what happens is that if we don't get a response, then that's it. We said in the letter, mm. if we don't get a response by this deadline, we will proceed with the lawsuit. So then we proceed with the lawsuit. And quite frankly, it goes back to the attorney's fees thing. So if we file the lawsuit and now we've incurred thousands of more dollars right. and then they say, oh, actually, I want to settle. Okay, great. But unfortunately, you have to reimburse all those right. additional fees for you just <laughs> deciding not to respond. You get attacked on. Yeah, no, so, that's, so not not respond at your own risk. No, that's just, I mean, but that's probably the thing. I mean, There's probably a lot of reasons, too, why lawyers don't respond. Because, you know, you know, they're not responding because it's maybe it's a flex. They're not responding because they just don't take you seriously. I don't mean you. I mean just the opposing counsel. Or, you know, attorneys are just people, too. And maybe they're just lazy. They did see it. You know what I mean? It could be something well, silly. Let me give you the other side of this, right? So um, you might have bigger companies like Warner or Universal where you'll send a demand and they get so many demand letters and, right. and they're ingesting so much that they, uh, number one, can't get to it. Or YouTube, right? Let's sue YouTube. So we send them a demand letter. They're not going to respond to you. So it's either they can't because they just can't get through it or you are a small fry and they're not going to do shit until they actually are sued because they just don't have capacity to respond to everyone. So, you know, a part of our tactic is just to look at, you know, who are we reaching out to and, and strategizing accordingly. 
my my final comment, I guess, on the thing would be just like, can you imagine like what the the legal team for a record label or for YouTube, like how many people it would be, like if because you you just you just blew my mind. Just I'm just thinking of just like all the people that are just submitting claims about things because you know they're just some kid in their bedroom that thinks that Ed Sheeran stole his song for some reason, and just I don't know, just or YouTube, just what just the sheer volume is what I mean, and just how many people and would they have like you know underlings kind of take care of and just kind. Of, like it goes through like a cyst. I can't even imagine how many, you know, just different things they might get in a given day. You know, um, as part of Ed Sheeran's case, I guess one of the things that he said um, after the fact, he had just said, look, you know, I, I, people come after me, but like, I'm a songwriter, I'm a husband, I'm a father. And just kind of think about the fact that there's only so many ways to write pop songs. There's only so mm -hmm. many chords. There's only so many melodies. Mm -hmm. And he goes, it's really tough when you have these cases and, and, you know, let's say plaintiffs are successful when they're just like, oh, that melody kind of sounds like mine. Right. And there really was not necessarily plagiarism, but the court finds, you know, for the plaintiff. But anyway, so what he was saying is if, Spotify is ingesting 60,000 pop songs a day. It's insane. You know, it's, it's, it's insanity to think that, okay, I heard your song and I ripped off your song or that there's not a ton of overlap in melodies in chord structures in lyrics. It's, do you it's think, insane. do you think that copyright raw law is going to have to change? Like, you know, I mean, it's constantly evolving and it's constantly moving. Um, but like, you know, to a significant change where they're like, bro, like, you like they pretty much got to steal your song before we're gonna do anything because there's not a lot of options and at the end of the day if so, i don't know at the end of the day if somebody kind of samples something or if something is kind of taken you know i i have something that i want to talk about later in my new music segment i don't know i guess it's hurting it, it's hurting the, the original artist because they're not whatever and somebody's taking their idea but at the same time it's like it's up to the audience to decide if something is kind of good or not and whether they're going to spend money i don't know maybe there's they just got to figure out a way to do it because some of the stuff it, it, i don't know is it really that big of a deal it is it is it is but like I don't know. I, what I feel, what I feel they're looking at right now is the seeing stuff that people bring, like the Mariah Carey thing. Like the stuff no, I think paying. everyone everyone should have a right to have their claim heard. If they think that someone else ripped off oh. their song, of course they should have a right. However, what they're looking at right now is creating a small claims process so that you don't have to go hire an attorney and spend one hundred fifty thousand dollars on attorney's fees in order to get to some kind of resolution. That there would be some kind of cheaper, faster process that people can can go through i think everyone's entitled to kind of you know pursue their claim oh, but sure. there's an efficiency and expense prohibition <laughs> so yeah no i definitely don't have anything um i'm not i'm not i'm not i'm not saying that nobody does i'm just saying that like there's gonna be a point in 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 life where i just feel like all the ideas are gonna be kind of i don't know i just just some of the cases that i do see be brought forward um are just kind of i don't know like it's just i don't know they're, they're, some of them are kind of silly to me.